What's up YouTube, Kyron back up in here with another video today. It's gonna be a little vlog. I didn't provide a lot of context for a lot of the clips that I got, of course, all the time, just, I'm, just because I'm always in the flow of life. I'm not really like stepping outside of it and I don't know, talking to the camera all the time, I guess. But I figured I'd just give you guys a little bit of context here, um, opening up the vlog. This is going to be a pop-up that I did with my friend Jacob, a lot of like nightlife, yeah, is there a night live? More like eating, hospitality type of stuff. I've been wanting to like document that a bit more and getting more getting more of that footage for you guys, making sure to like have my friends film whenever we go to these like really nice restaurants. I wanna get more accustomed and used to that um, just cause there's so many nice restaurants in Montreal and I feel like documenting that for you guys be really fun. And also I ended up doing a talk at my college, which is pretty sick. So I'm gonna include that footage as well, but we're gonna start it off with some PR for some like lifestyle and home stuff that I got recently. So we'll start with that. The first one, always so sick whenever I get opportunities like this. This is from the good people over at Aesop. So grateful for them always looking out for me. I've been supporting Aesop for quite some time now. So whenever I get opportunities like this, it's just like, it blows my mind. Look at that packaging, it's so sick. They wrapped it in like some type of some type of like plant of sorts, a dried plant. So this is gonna be their new fragrance. They're like really revamping their fragrances from based on what the employees have been telling me whenever I go. Uh, they're putting a lot of effort into it now. Not that they haven't before, but they're just really going the extra mile now. And this is one of their new ones that they've added to the repertoire of fragrances. I'm gonna crack this open. Nice. Ooh, very, very nice. Very fresh, very like, almost sea-like. It kind of reminds you of the sea, but very fresh. Aesop smells are always very signature. It smells um, very her herbal. I like it, honestly, pretty good one. But anyway, all that out of the way, I hope you guys enjoy this footage, um, yeah. You want sideways? Look at where Jacob, look at where Jacob got this to. What's, it's Bar, Baristello? Yeah. Insane sandwich. Crazy. Good cortados today. Pop up there. <laughs> Out of 10? Out of 10. That's a solid eight and a half right now. The sweetness from the fig, proper. I think it was a fit breakdown, man. Eh? Tremendous. <laughs> Leaf. This is a sick jacket, dude. Yes. Really nice jacket. And the beat Rockefellers. And then the, the Grotto, Grotto beating, right? Yes, sir. Really nice. It's a good one, man. Tremendous on the pants. Tremendous. <laughs> <laughs> the Jacob's fit breakdown. I'm gonna go bottom, the Louis Traders. I have to wear these more often, but I'm really enjoying them right now. I find they're pretty good for the fall. These are Camille Fortigeon. I think she's a British designer. I could be wrong though. Really so if all nice, I'm a trainer. And then this is a uh, thing from Larry Rick Owens Fall Winter 90. Yeah. And Marisan t shirt, you know, inspired by the pop up, you know? We go back to it. Nice. And then uh, SR Studio hat. Blood Sea Back. Montreal, give it up for Pazmay right now! Yeah! 
fucking noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to just let's fucking make some fucking noise. clips megs and i just got approached by this studio called nice tones one of the biggest things that's so difficult in canada and in montreal specifically is that the weather creeps around really quickly when it comes to fall winter and in the industry that we're in like shooting content out and about outside is not too easy when it's like minus 30 degrees outside and there's snow um so finding a studio like this is really really rare and we were just grateful for the opportunity to shoot in here if you guys are interested i'll have all the information linked down below for you guys to book if you guys are in montreal as well uh, i have a discount code as well so i'll link all that information down below so that you guys can get a little steal love the furniture in here great little bellini sofa super like new york lofty crisp vibe and i think it made for some great photos and i'm excited for you guys to see that on the ig let me know what type of other content you guys would like to see out of a space like this. Uh, they're super willing and negotiable um, to have me use the space. So I'm excited to do some like outfit videos in this. Um, like it's just gonna be so, so cool. And I'm happy with the liberty that I have. Uh, beautiful lighting It's just gonna make for some awesome content. And I'm so ecstatic to showcase it with you guys. Okay, the poor. You see the poor. That's a skill. That's a skill. Oh, yeah. Minimal spillage. <laughs> Yo, look, they have the 360 camera up there, oh, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't cash me on. You see that? <laughs> yo, what you got back there, boy? Hey, yo. Yo, looking at me like that, bro. But. <laughs> 
fuck 12. Oh, wow. Dayton, Dayton, Dayton. Go give them a shot right there. Go, go give them a shot right there. Go. Why are you thinking of starting? Go, 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 go. Hey, 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 hey. Especially the doubles really nice. I don't know if I can eat this dumpling. Get in there close and bring it over. Yeah, you know? Get in there. Like... No, no, I'm not eating the whole dumpling. Ah. Ah. There you go. Have a dumpling. Are we gonna hit the green onion? You okay with green onion? Of course. Sure. And then we'll end it with some ginger. You okay with that? Yeah. Just a little bit. Chili. Yeah. Just do it. And then you gotta mix that up in your bowl. All right. Thank you, bro. Mm. But I mean, you gotta get there someday. I think sometimes you need that uh, formal look sometimes to feel like as yourself, even though you don't want to feel like that. <laughs> I think that I won't find a better black. I think it's really the, jacket. The only thing I don't like about the, the this yeah, is that it just leaves a bunch of yeah. I think eventually it'll yeah. stop, hopefully. But if not, then that's kind of is annoying. Oh, I'm not gonna wash. Oh yeah, I don't think you could wash that because it's because wool, right? So, as they were saying before, my name's Kyron Warp. I'm a creative consultant, fashion stylist, uh, content creator, a bunch of like mo multiple streams of revenue, much multiple streams of fashion industry all into one. Um, I feel like it's a renaissance era nowadays. You don't really have to commit to one thing. 
Uh, I realized that growing up in my journey in the fashion industry. So I'm just gonna start about some of my origins and then build up until where I am today. So after LaSalle, ended up giving my corporate lens, like, uh, like I, I just had to like give that scratch an itch. If, that's what, if that makes sense, I just wanted to really understand why LaSalle is very keen on like putting people into positions where it's like you go into a marketing position, a social media position, anything like that. Because I was a freelancer for the whole time, I was like maybe structure would be something that could be useful. So I got approached to be a consultant at a, um, a, well, a well-known fashion establishment in, in Montreal uh, called Fab and they own a, a multitude of bands. Bench is one of them, and they onboarded me to start their streetwear division of the company. They wanted to do like a, a, a private label brand within Bench that's more streetwear focused, and so that's why they implemented me. I was doing influencer, manage, uh, influencer marketing, I was doing styling in the studio, and then also I was just doing overall consulting with the project for the private label that they were starting. So yeah, that's kind of what I did. But then they let me go, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, they let go like about 20 people. Um, and this was like a month before COVID. So I was just kind of like in a weird space. Didn't really know what I wanted to do at the time. Um, but it made me double down on what I knew best, which was the content creation and stuff that I was doing all along. Just being very social, connecting with people. And ever since then, can move to the next slide. Literally the very moment, like the same month that I got laid off, I just like went full time into content creation and I've seen growth ever since. So. I guess that's just, this chart is just to say, like, if you believe in something, like, just actually follow through and do it. Like, don't, don't let things, reason, yeah, you know, right? like, it was like a bad thing turned into a positive. Yeah. So, like, it was really what I needed and it, it prevailed over time for me. So I was really ecstatic about what happened in a, in a weird way. So, yeah. So now I'm moving into some of the stuff I'm doing right now. This is a recent project that I did for Days Magazine. I was supposed to bring the issue. I forgot to bring the issue, but it's okay. Um, as they showed before, the cover was with uh, Rihanna on the front. Um, so it was a really, really big issue. Uh, her first time doing the cover, and she's just like an iconic woman. So like, to be associated with that and be integrated with that magazine was just incredible to me. On the left, we have my friend Jaden, his artist name is Crypt, and on the right, we have my friend Davian, his artist name is Blacken. I was able to style both of them. They're both like longtime family friends of mine, and it's just like really incredible to see them in print in a magazine that you're able to get across the world, which is just insane. So, yeah, to be a part of that was really, really cool. Now I could relate it back to this guy right here. He ended up coming in with the talk. Uh, this is my first really consistent styling opportunity, I would say. This is like my main artist that I style. A lot of the other opportunities that come my way are very one-off, but this has been the most consistent opportunity that I've had thus far. Um, it's been a year long. I've been working with Shamar, aka Skyfall. And yeah, just doing amazing things. This is like a billboard opportunity that he got in New York. Uh, really growing exponentially exponentially as an artist right now and i'm just really excited for what the future is told with him so yeah it's gonna be cool and yeah that's about it that's my slides wow like when i first was doing your project there was a lot of people in the industry but it was hard for me to relate because i was doing something that was so like out of touch with like it being at the forefront. So many people now are like content creators, stylists, or like just their own entity. And like for the longest time, it was like for you to be really at the forefront of fashion, you had to be representing a like major person. And like uh, I remember listening in. I think Freddie was one of the people that came in for Essence. Freddie she, Towers. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And she was talking about Essence, and I was like, so like in the moon of the stars about. It. I was like, wow, this is like an amazing company, but. Something in the back of my head was like, I don't know if I could commit five to ten years of my life to like one company because like my heart is in so many different places right now. Um, and it was another full circle moment. Like I got reached out to by my friend Eugene, who works hand in hand with Freddie, and they wanted to start this whole like initiative with Instagram. I mean Instagram Lives and like just live shopping with Essence. It's like a new proposal that they're trying to do. And like they, I was one of the first content creators that they hit up to get that off the ground. So it was like. 
I'm not working for them, I'm working with them, so it's really cool. So, yeah. But I think you can attest to all those full circle moments that mm. we live over and over again yeah, uh, yeah. in this small industry of ours. It's for crazy sure. from when you were a student to when you had a classmate to mm -hmm. when you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I taught them both. They were both <laughs> in my class. And, um, and now Freddie coming into your life for other reasons yeah. and you know people that I think that's the magic of this industry they have no idea who in here is going to like come in and out of their lives Definitely. over and over again yeah, yeah it's uh, I think that's one of the really really fun parts because it's a small very intimate industry and like he's talking about people that you think you're six degrees of separation from but you're really two mm -hmm. you know it's really easy if you put the work in and you you have the hunger factor yeah. that I always saw from day one in Thank your you. eye, he had that Thank he you. had that spark. Remember, and you were doodling like skateboards and stuff <laughs> at that time. Yeah. But a few years ago already. Yeah. yeah, and and it's true what you're saying. You didn't have a lot of templates or you know or no. or, or sort of mentors for mm. what you were doing. Like you had to imagine it all by yourself. Whereas now, recently, it's kind of exploded. For sure. But really, there was nobody. Everybody was doing that sort of cookie cutter mm -hmm. corporate. I want to become a so and so. Yeah. And you were kind of. I didn't really understand what you were doing, mm -hmm. but I believed in it, and I knew you would something was going to come of that. And yeah. Yeah. Here we are. Okay. So sky's the limit, really, mm -hmm. in terms of. But I think um, you're probably going to always, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. be pretty loyal to a sort of a vibe, right? Yeah. yeah you would never yeah, kind yeah. of say yes to Arden. No, or, no. Yeah, I don't I mean, know, just for, you never know. I mean, I'm not cool a big supporter of like yeah. fast fashion, right. so to speak. Like, I preach like longevity and like just investment pieces so much on my channel right that it wouldn't be directly be in line with like what i'm trying to do so like i've been approached by like like really really big fast fashion brands for like amounts tempting. that i'm like tempting. very tempting yeah very very tempting but like you you end up like selling your soul for yeah. like really yeah it's yeah. like money that's not worth it because then you like stop all these other really these guys i won't be interested yeah, anymore exactly yeah, mm -hmm. that's a common dilemma. Yeah. What was it with like working with Days Magazine? How was the experience? The experience with that? Yeah. Um, so that was probably one of the most uh, professional jobs I've ever had. Uh, just because like they had so many people on set, there was like I was one of three stylists. Can you walk us through when, when, sure. when, when, where, what, well? Yeah. Wow. So <laughs> it started with the initial contact. They contacted um, my friend. Jaden here and then he kind of like told all of, our, all of our friends and they approached him and said that we already have a stylist and he said I'm not going to do it if Kyron doesn't do it Ooh. which is crazy like I was like you can't see that friend. today's magazine like but he don't did. do that but he did. yeah and, and they're like boy. they're like okay yeah like then then he's involved so they put me on the project um I was communicating with Lee Ben which is like main head stylist and then he had an assistant stylist um, and then I was more in charge of these two looks, so then they credited me as the wardrobe stylist. So yeah, it started off with just those early communications, then we locked in a date, had the fitting in the morning that took about like maybe two hours. We just collectively brought all of the wardrobe selections that uh, we took. A lot of the pieces were made by both, well, were sourced from myself. Also, Eugene helped me with a couple of the sourcing pieces for that. And then with Lee Ben, he has his own connections within the industry, picked from other places. Had to fitting for an hour or two. Um, then they went into hair and makeup for an hour. And where were you physically? I New was York? in the Mile End, actually. Oh, the mile yeah, end I was in the Mile End. Um, yeah, and then the shoot took maybe about three hours three hours or so. And they had other profiles that they were doing for this one sec segment and that, that ran around three days in a span, but this was one of the days and I was responsible for these two artists. So that's kind of how that went. Yeah. yeah. They had a, uh, there was a lot of people. There was maybe two people from the, the editor team, two, peop two photographers, um, three stylists, and all the talent, and the makeup artists, the hairstyles. So really, packed house for the fitting for sure but it was it was great energy could that cross fingers mm -hmm. be a precursor to more work with them hopefully honestly I, 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 I hope to get involved in more publications because in terms of the grand fashion lens like all all stylists are like really held by the work that they have in these grand publications so like the more that I have these in my 
catalog, mm -hmm. the more that I'm treated ser seriously. So like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, or even like just the placements that I have, like well, with working with Sky, like having billboard work is like incredible. Having publication work. So do you work put any company. time into actually having a portfolio that someone's going to ask you about? That's what the website is, really. That's what yeah, your it's like is. that's like the digital portfolio now. Okay. I feel like I feel like uh, having a portfolio that you send out to people. Why not just like have it no, accessible to everyone? Idea. You know. So like, yeah. <laughs>